This is a I only touch greatness remix. Scan the code and follow. Hey guys, it's me on Lucic jumping on the I only touch greatness podcast. That's for sure. Um, Mike, you want to hit him with a stat? I was just going to say, uh, we'll start with uh, playing for the Coca-Cola Express. Uh, what was that like? <laughs> you know what? Um, it was awesome. It was. It truly was awesome. Uh, it was like a surreal feeling as a 16-year-old getting to play in junior A, uh, getting a chance to live at home uh, and, and play in the junior leagues. Um it's really funny because that summer I really had nowhere to play. Like I literally had nowhere to play. I had, and you know what? I remember telling my dad and I went up to him. I'm like, you know what? I'm tired of like going from camp to camp to camp and trying to make all these different junior teams. And the South Delta ice Hawks were the affiliate affiliate of Quitlam that year. And I said, okay, we're going to pick one team and their affiliate and we'll try to make it that way. So, um, so I go with South Delta Ice Hawks camp, uh, really good camp. Went to Coquitlam Express camp, had a really good camp. And I actually didn't make Coquitlam originally out of the camp, but, you know, I had a really, I played 14 games in junior B and then I played 50 out of the 60 games with the Coquitlam Express and you know what? It was it was what I needed as a sixteen year old. And and a lot of kids think, oh, you need to play at the best level right away. That wasn't the case, especially for a guy like me. You know, it was it was important that I got to, you know, and and playing as a sixteen year old in the BCHL is actually a pretty big deal, uh, especially at that time. And getting to play for Rick Lands and Darcy Rhoda and Sean Crowther and and having all the teammates that I did, it was, you know what, I don't think I would have had as good as, of a transition to the WHL unless I had that year, that year with the Coquitlam Express. And we got a good story that we've learned. Uh, Mike, you want to give the credit to this one? Yeah, we heard that there was a good uh, bus story. I think it was coming back from uh, Langley or Chilliwack or something, and uh, bunch of guys were throwing snowballs at the bus and i heard the bus stop you got you got uh, uh, i hear and i hear everybody just uh, ran <laughs> it kind of went that way yeah yeah it went that way uh awesome. yeah so yeah we thought we were pretty tough back then and, <laughs> and hey hey that's a lot hey you know what i don't know what the bchl is like today because you know what um it's hard to follow all these yeah, leagues now but yeah, but back then we had like seven killers on our team. You know, <laughs> we had like seven guys that could throw down on that team. So when we walked off that bus, there were some scared people. That's for damn sure. <laughs> That's for sure. You know, I, I I figured my jersey would be the first one retired in Coquitlam, but uh, I'm a couple of years. <laughs> I'm maybe I'm 38, so I got a few years on you. That's for sure. But the yeah, I figured my jersey would be retired in Coquitlam first, but then now it's Taurus is there and yours should be there. And there's one other person. We were trying to figure that out earlier. We just had on the Coquitlam Express and they uh we were trying to figure out who that second jersey was. I thought maybe you might know. Actually I didn't even know I didn't even know there were any retired jerseys. So I have no I didn't even know Taurus was retired. And you know what? Rightfully show so Torres was a great player for the Express, and he brought him home uh, RBC Cup. But the other guy, if you if you were going to ask me, I don't know. Is it uh, is it McNeely? They thought maybe they, they thought maybe Hunt did Hunt play there? No, 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 no. No, Hunt was a Chilliwack Chief. No oh, chance, okay. man. Okay. No, no, Hunt was a Chilliwack Chief. <laughs> oh, there was a big rivalry with you guys too back then. Oh yeah, but then. Uh, me and Jihan were really good buddies when we were in the Giants together, so it was all yeah washed away after that, you know? Um, what's some of the challenges you came across in getting to the dub, basically? Well, obviously the biggest challenge was I wasn't drafted to the dub, and 
I remember, I remember that day. I, I felt like, you know, my hockey career was over, especially when you're like a 15 year old kid and that's such an important day for you. And you feel like, you know, that's a gateway to make, make it to the next step, not only, you know, into the junior ranks to get to junior B, BCHL, uh, any of the junior A leagues, but even CHL, WHL, NHL. But, you know, when I wasn't drafted, especially I led, I led my team in BC best ever in scoring. I was the best player on my BC best ever team that year. And I still didn't get drafted. And I was like, you know, in my head, I was going, fuck, what the fuck do I got to do? <laughs> you know, but, but at the end of the day, I look back at it now and everyone has to deal with adversity unless you're Connor McDavid or Sidney Crosby or one of these guys that are, you know, born to be like, you have to deal with some type of adversity in your life and in your hockey career. Uh, whether you're going to make it or not. And, and for me, it was as a 15 and 16 year old. And, and like I said, I, I made it. I worked out by myself. Like I didn't have a trainer. I used to just go lift weights with my high school buddy. And you know why he was the best man. My, 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 my buddy, Nem, he, uh, he was the best man at my wedding. I was the best man at his wedding, uh, high school buddies. And, you know, we, we used to go to Bonzer, like uh, in right by Metro Town there. Yeah. And that's where we used to lift weights. And that's how I got myself ready to make it. And then my first trainer was when I first got to uh, the Giants with Ian Gallagher. But before that, nobody ever told me what to do and how to do and what to do. And I just, in my head, I was just like, I just need to do something to like stand out and luckily at that time fighting was a big thing and then I knew I could always play and I knew I could always had a skill set but the only way I could get noticed was by beating people up and once I figured out I was pretty good at it it, it ended up working out for me you know what I'm saying well oh, that's true. absolutely and uh funny you say that because uh I believe he's your cousin, but I don't know. But Nick Billick, lacrosse, lacrosse. Yeah. Man. Oh yeah. Uh, yeah. He's uh, he's a beauty too, and tough as fuck, man. I've seen that guy beat the shit out of guys in lacrosse games. Oh yeah, we talk it all. We, hey, you know what? We're we're not we're not actually blood related, but um, um, his dad is the godfather to, I think it's my youngest brother, or my dad was the godfather to him and his his sister. But anyways, um, yeah, same thing. Nick, oh. Nick, Nick throws down, man. You know what? Me and him, he was actually in Calgary last December. We were having drinks, and we were like, holy, sh like, you know what? Him being a three-peat with the rush and all that type of stuff, I love it, man. And and you know what? Like, him and his older brother, Stev, God rest his soul, God rest his soul, it was, you know what? They, they were our, like, my first friends, I, I like. We grew up as like babies together, and there he is beating the shit out of guys in the NL, and you know, <laughs> like, yeah. trying to do the same in the NHL. And you know, I love the guy to death. So, if you can catch the both of us in the back of the alley, look out. Okay, oh, I, definitely, he's a good guy too. <laughs> and, uh, and, and I guess I'll tell this story now too. So uh, we're going to the Golden Spike one night. Well, here in, in Port Moody, there's a bar, the Golden Spike. And we usually go to the same booth every week. Me and my buddies, we all roll in. We're always like 10, 15 deep. And we got the nice booth. And we've been going there every night. And we get there this night. And we're like, they're like, yeah, your, your regular table's not available today. And we're like, what the fuck do you mean that our regular table's not available today? And we go and look. And we're like, they're like, yeah, these guys have been here all night. They're spending good money. And then I'm like, <laughs> I'm like, who the fuck are these guys? And then I go and look. I'm like, holy shit, that's Milan Lucic. And then two trades. Oh my god, man! This is like 11 years ago. You're pretty like that's yeah. the one time I went there. I didn't even know that place existed. Yeah. The the uh, <laughs> so I ended up there and I seen you, the waitress with two trays of drinks carrying oh, up. Oh man. And then uh, that's where I ran over and gave you a, and I offered to buy you a drink and I bought you a 
tequila shot or some shit. So circle of life. <laughs> now you, you, we're back. Well, I thank you. And, and I actually remember that night because that was the only night I ever went there. Yeah. And it was actually, you know what? It was actually, uh, you know what? It was, it was a good time and it was, uh, it was a nice place. So yeah. thanks again for the, for the shot that you gave me <laughs> yeah. that night. Yeah. <laughs> You're tuning into I Only Touch Greatness podcast. Vancouver's best show with Ryan Hayes. Often imitated but never duplicated. I Only Touch Greatness podcast with Ryan Hayes. Looking for the most beers on tap? Great steaks, great staff. Head over to the John B. The John B. Pub, the best bar in town. Say hey, sent you.